Well folks, time to put this thing on the scope. Now I wanted to check um, whether the output signal was coming out as a clean sine wave. I've got a clean sine wave going in the back at the TA input and I've got this whole thing cleaned up and all that sort of stuff. Now when I listened to it last in the last video, yes the tone was coming through. I did notice as I put the volume up a little bit of distortion. I'm sure you might have as well. And I wanted to just make sure that the negative ground issue or the positive ground issue was not an issue. And I found that indeed the ground of the speaker is the same ground as the signal generator coming in. Now, if you've worked with positive uh, ground or yeah, positive chassis radios, you know that uh, you've got to be careful when you're using two devices that have earth reference, like the signal generator the ground of the signal generator is actually connected to mains earth and with a scope the ground of the scope is also connected to mains earth unless it's a battery powered device and it's floating so if you're not careful you can actually short an output and i don't didn't want to do that but we've got no problems as long as you don't connect uh, the ground of the scope to the chassis or parts of the chassis it's going to be fine I'm, I'm connecting it to the ground of the speaker itself so ground of the speaker is the same as the ground of the signal generator, so we don't have a ground short on the scope. Now I'm going to show you what happens, a little bit uh, surprising or not, but I'll show you what happens when I put this uh, thing on the scope. There's a reason why I'm showing you all these on one, uh, in one image. You'll see why in a second. Let me switch on the power supply. I've got uh, 9 volts, 150 milliamps current limit. Just to be safe, that's going into the back. I've got a 1 kilohertz signal coming in from the signal generator into the TA input at the back. It's a 200 millivolts RMS signal. And I'll switch on the radio. And we've got ourselves a nice sine wave. And it's drawing 100, well, 70 milliamps at this level. Now, if I increase the volume, look what happens. There it's all fine. As soon as I go beyond a certain point, that starts happening. The current's raised slightly, which is not serious, but that is the zero distortion point. And if I look at that, I'm getting 438 millivolts RMS. Now 438 millivolts RMS into four ohms, which is what the dummy load is at, is very, very small. If I change the dummy load to eight ohms, Let's see where distortion starts. It starts at the same place, but now I've got 810 millivolts RMS. But that speaker is definitely a 4 ohm speaker. So I try to figure out what the hell is going on here. Usually if the output transistors blow, they blow, and that would definitely become visible on there. So something is definitely wrong. And at first I was a little bit mystified. And the reason is that when you try to diagnose where this, where this distortion starts, the first thing you do is go to the input, right? So if I take my scope and I put it at the input, literally where it comes into the radio, that's on channel 1, it's already distorted, the yellow. Okay, which is a bit odd. I mean, all it's got before that is just the uh, the capacitors, the the tone controls. It's all passive. There should be nothing there that would cause that distortion. However, it does, and that really got me. <laughs> so I went one step further, or rather, I went back from the output transistors, and I kept seeing the same waveform until I realized that this thing's got a feedback loop. I mean, that's obvious. The first thing you think of is the feedback is actually seeing the bad signal and it's sending part of that back signal back which then gets amplified again and that distorts the entire signal. So the whole thing is in a loop. You can't really go back without removing the feedback loop. However, in this particular case, the actual feedback loop also biases or rather, yes, the feedback loop is used to bias the uh, DC, DC state of the output transistors. So that 4.2 volts that we talked about in the last video, which is where you're supposed to set 
or where you're supposed to have the uh, the two emitters of the output transistors of the push-pull pair, that is actually set by the feedback loop. So if you take the feedback loop out, you're removing the feedback of the audio, but you're also messing up the bias of the output transistor, so you can't do that. But then I decided to put a thinking cap on, and I tried something, and that was I removed the speakers. And this is what happens. When you remove the speakers, it is clipping there, but when we go to, there it starts clipping, and it's clipping uh, symmetrically, so top and bottom. But if you take it to there, we've got about 2.8 volts RMS, which is sort of getting up there to, you know, 2 watts. Uh, yeah, that's about 2 watts. That's what they tell us this radio is supposed to produce. So I think the problem here is the output transistors. I'm going to have a closer look at that, or have had a closer look at that, and that is definitely working all the way across. A nice clean sine wave. This is with no load. And of course that's why when I put the 8 ohm, I got a higher extension before it started the clipping. So those transistors seem to be working, seem to be working fine as long as you're not drawing any current through them. Which is what happens when you, when I talk about current, I'm talking about signal current. Which is what happens when you put a, a low impedance load, a 4 ohm load on it. It has to drive it, and by to drive it, it needs current, and the current goes through the transistors from the collector to the emitter, and that's what's causing, I believe, that distortion. So those transistors are kaput, and it happens to be both. I think it's both because the distortion happens top and bottom. See, it starts there. It could be just one, I'm not sure. Because what happens with the feedback is that it's um, negative feedback. So you could be having the top transistor, the one that's doing the top of the wave. That could be distorting. And then the feedback comes back and it's in the opposite wave. So it distorts the bottom wave. So it could actually just be one of those transistors. I don't know. And there's very little way to actually check. See, it starts wobbling there. So what I need to do is I need to figure out what I'm going to do with this. I don't have a pair of uh, AC188s, 186s, whatever it is. They are germaniums. I don't have a pair of those, but I do have a pair of... This is from a... This is a, from a uh, supersonic radio, which was built, I believe, in Zimbabwe, or Rhodesia, when it was still Rhodesia. And this thing was... Actually, I got this because this is the basis of a very famous distortion pedal that um, John was a Deacon, is it John Deacon? From Queen used. He got this uh, power amplifier section from an old radio he found in a bin and apparently he tried it and the distortion he got out of it he liked and that's actually become quite an iconic sound on some of the, um, the Queen uh, records. Kind of odd. But I had this thing and I've never really used it. But I do have a pair of AC-128s, and the other one I believe is AC-126, if I'm not mistaken. I'll have to pull it out and check. They are uh, germaniums. They are germanium output transistors. The power rating I think is about the same. I think the only difference between the uh, 126 and 188 to 186 is the voltage levels, and those voltage levels that we have here are both or always below the minimum one. I can't even remember which one is lower. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and um, I'm going to replace these output transistors temporarily with the ones that I have on there, which I believe are working because I did try that amp and see if we can get rid of this uh, distortion, which is kind of ugly. So here we go. I've removed the two transistors. These are AC188K and AC187K. They are germanium. They're a PNP NPN pair. And let's see what we get out of this one. Well, that looks okay, doesn't it? However, I've noticed something. This is sporadic. I got a gain of 6 a little while back, an HFE of 6. Now it's giving me a correct reading. Isn't that bloody typical? It's like going to the doctor and your symptoms have gone away. again. Well, it's staying consistent. 
However, it was giving me some strange readings. What does this one say? I don't believe it. Oh well, yeah. You can see something wrong there. The forward voltage 2.1 volts. Remember, this thing is a germanium. It should be 0 0.1, 0 0.2. If I turn it around, it was reading it as a JFET. Here we go. Gain of 300. Forward voltage of 221. It's all over the place. And I've got some news for you. If you recall, I've said in the past that I'm a hoarder. <laughs> well, sort of. Look what I found. I literally found this in a box, which I call salvaged parts. I try not to throw stuff away, and I found a pair that match these guys exactly. It's in a 188 and 187K. And let's see what this gives us. Well, that won't give us anything, will it? That's more like it. Forward voltage of 95 millivolts and a gain of 111. This is the NPN one. And if I turn around just to make sure that this thing is being consistent, sort of consistent. Remember, this uh, high-tech device is not exactly, <laughs> yeah, laboratory standard, but uh, yeah, 112 and 94 millivolts. This is the NPN one. And the PNP one Seventy five hundred one millivolts. Slight discrepancy in the gain, but I think these guys are going to do for now. I really did not expect to find these guys exactly a matching pair, but I must have taken this out of some circuit board and, and kept it because um, and I'm thankful that I did. Now, I have found that you can you can actually buy these. I recall a while back and I believe it was. In fact, I know it was the um, Brown T1000, where I needed some uh, germanium transistors. I think it was 158, if I'm not mistaken. And I had a problem finding them. The, the problem was not finding them. The problem was ensuring that they were original and not copies from somewhere. And I found a company called Donberg Electronics in Ireland, and they have them. And I found these guys, the AC187K, €3.99. And the 188K399. So I'm ordering four of each, just to make sure that next time I don't uh, I don't have to look through the the parts bin. But this company seems to have a lot of stuff that um, you know old stock and and hard to find parts. They are by no means sponsoring this channel. <laughs> I'm buying these things, but it is also always useful to know where to source some of the stuff. So back to these. I'm going to fit these in the in the board and see what we get. Just by the way, um, one of the great uses of this thing is when you put this in here, that is one, two, three, right? And it actually tells you what pins they are. So now we know that pin one is collector, the middle one is base, and pin three is the emitter. Always useful because sometimes these guys are kind of difficult to figure out. They sort of form a triangle down there, but still a little bit vague. So I usually use this to tell me which the pins are and make sure I don't make mistakes. Let me get that done. Well, those transistors are in. They were kind of difficult to get in because this thing is a whole mess of wires down here. Let me show you. See that? Now you've got two choices. You either solder around those wires and you've got to be extremely careful that you don't burn and melt them. Or you've got to remove them all. So I tried the first option and I think I got away without melting too much or anything at all, I hope. So let's see the result. The signal generator is on, connected. Power is connected. I've just got to switch on the on off switch. And we've got a signal. Let's see what happens when we go up. Now we were getting as high as 400. Oh! We're getting 500 and something. It was going up to 400 and something. This is on dummy load, but it's on 4 ohms. And it's still going up. Oh, okay. 
there's our clipping. If we take it to about there, we're at 2.2 volts RMS. I suppose I could go, but they say it's uh, 2 watts at 10% distortion. Now, I'm not sure what 10% distortion looks like on a sine wave, quite frankly. I know that you can hear it like that. You can hear it, but I suppose you would hear 10% distortion anyway. Uh, there we go. I raised the limit here to 202, actually to 350 milliamps. It's drawing 260 milliamps. And we're good. Let's see what happens if I change the treble. Treble down, treble up. That's on max. Bass goes a little bit more. But the clipping has to do with the supply rails. And if I look at, uh, what is this? We're at 1 volt. If we look at peak-to-peak, uh, -peak, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. That's probably what you're going to get from a uh, dual set of transistors that's biased at 4.2, running from a 9 volt supply. Okay, that's good. That part's done. Ha! Such a simple thing. Okay, well, I'm happy we've got that step sorted out now. What else do we need to do? Well, regardless of the fact that this thing is now working, I'm still going to order those transistors because it's not giving us as much power as we expect. It does say uh, 2 watts at 4 ohms. That's not quite 2 watts, is it? I'm going to close this all up, test it again, because when you do close this, you can pinch wires and all that sort of thing. I want to make sure we don't uh, make that stupid mistake. Close it up, and then I'm going to start focusing on the radio sections. I want to see what it is we are getting or not. Uh, no, I will, I'll, I'll resist the temptation. One step at a time. So for now, I'm going to sign off. Hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And uh, if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon. I'll be back very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now, and stay safe.